Throughout this channel, we've seen it all. Nicktoons playing baseball, Jerry Rice's dog playing football, Michael Jordan indiscriminately killing monsters with a basketball, and wrestling twisted metal. But what if I told you that the sport that has the most absurd amount of weird games is actually golf? <laughs> Hear me out. I know golf can be one of the most mundane sports to look at on the surface, and that's why you immediately doubt me. But man, I'm telling you. This is a golf game. So let's crash on into some of these games, and I'm not talking about Tiger Woods. And normally I hate this kind of stuff, but considering this is one of my longer videos and I paid for a good portion of these games, if you enjoyed this at all, feel free to pretend that Abby's golf club here is your mouse cursor and the head she hits is the like button. Well, this just looks like a regular golf game to me. Ah, I see what kind of game this is. What the golf is just madness. Your objective is to reach the flag. You control a ball. Sometimes, sometimes it's a golf ball. Sometimes it's a golf club. Sometimes it's the hole itself. You can be a soccer ball, a soccer goal, a box, a house, Flappy Bird, Angry Bird, Mario, the Shooting Radical, Chair, Vase, Lawn Mowing Viking Turtle, Dance Dance Revolution, Art Giraffe, Robot, Barrel, cow, TV, cow, cow, Guy, cheap, Slime, Space, cab, Ball, hook, Trophy, shoe, Archer, Jenga. Olympics. When you enter a level of what the golf, you have no idea what you'll be playing as. I mean, I'm hammer throwing toast into a toaster in a golf game. You just gotta go with it. Normally games like this rely on their weirdness to hide from the lack of good gameplay, but what the golf varies it up enough for things to not get boring. Yes, most of the game could be described as get your weird ass thing into the flag, but sometimes you can be platforming in a Mario type clone, or you can be in space with each planet having their own gravitational pull, or you'll be playing Katamari. It all works. The physics, the art style, and most importantly, my curiosity are all met. Even if you get bored of what the golf, you would want to keep going because you just want to see what these crazy troubled soul developers keep coming up with next. You are a golf ball in this little hub world where you go from theme to theme. After a certain amount, you eventually have a boss fight against the computer. Each level has alternative objectives that you can do if you want to be a completionist. After the campaign, there are even more things you could do, like a two-player mode, other themed adventures, and even a level creator if you want to play what other crazy bastards create. Or you yourself could be that crazy bastard and create what you want. While I could see criticisms of the fact that the game is just silly, who cares? If you looked at any type of footage, you knew what this game would be. It's stupid, silly fun that's good for some laughs. It's actually nothing really like golf, more of a puzzle game, honestly, but it's nothing that's meant to be taken too seriously. Maybe it's a little too stupid, as I feel like I've gotten dumber since playing it. You see all these mistakes in the script? That's the what the golf effect right there. Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro-Am. <laughs> Just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? This game is based off the Adult Swim TV show, and I remember seeing commercials of this game, and I always wondered, how did this show get a game and a movie? Put your pitchforks down, I'm actually a fan of the series. But it's fairly niche, especially compared to its contemporaries. But anyway, Starting up Aqua Teen Zombies, you notice that the game actually looks surprisingly good. Yes, this is an emulator running in HD, but I'm more so talking about how the character designs from the show smoothly translate over to 3D. Looking at other games like Ed and Eddie try to do this while having characters that look like a blind man made them based on description alone. What the fuck is that? We actually have a story here. Frylock is invited to a golf course while Shake and Miwa tag along. 
You break some of Carl's windows and you're in the game. You play as Master Shake, who's a milkshake, which would be a little strange to see a cup playing golf generally, but it's like not even the top 10 weird things I've played as in this video so far. You play golf just how you would in any 3D golf game with this start and stop meter for power and accuracy. If that was it, I wouldn't have even included it in this video. When you take your shot, you yourself have to travel to the ball. Along the way, you'll run into some sorts of monsters and enemies. So in between each shot, you are engaging in combat. Some of the worst combat, I might add. I think the only combat that can be worse than this is if you lick the shit that kills the roaches, and even that's debatable. As Shake, you just mash the X button until everything stops moving. You once in a while get temporary weapons, and you can even switch to Frylock, but none of it is any fun. Besides fighting, there are items placed all over the levels which give you power-ups like Meatwad rolling with the golf ball. Meatwad, I need your help. This is awkward. The golf courses are pretty varied, but I got hit with some bullshit. There's this level where the hole is surrounded by a dome. The only way you can get the ball into the hole is to hit it in one of these many teleporters. The concept of this is dumb in general because the only way you can get a good score on this level is trial and error because you don't know which teleporters to hit it through. But besides all that, once I got the right teleporter, the ball just straight up missed the hole and I was screwed. I used the mulligan which brought the ball back out of the dome, but the teleporter is destroyed once you use it so I had no way of getting the ball back in there so I started over and did it from the beginning and it happened again I went on top of the dome and then I'm somehow in the dome this makes about as much sense as the show so I guess it's on brand I have to mention that even exploring the levels isn't even fun you can really benefit from a sprint button I mean look at this damn Come on. Oh my God. Holy cannoli, oh my God. Also the quality of voice clips is terrible. Okay, boneheads, listen up. I'm gonna teach you the finer points of the game. First, you'll learn how to drive the ball. Looks like we're short on space, so we'll just drive into Carl's windows. He won't mind. What? Like, did the actors record this while the mic was in another room? And the overuse of the same lines is very annoying. Hey, where's that lady with the drink card? 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 Ah, I just can't get that snack car lady out of my mind. She's fantastic. Hey, where's that lady with the... That love mummy's a real pack rat. His possessions are valueless and plentiful. Avoid those and you may have a clean shot at the hole. Good thing that wind stopped. Otherwise, this hole would have been interesting. Is that Scott Van Pelt? The hell is he doing here? The only other gameplay thing worth mentioning is these little golf cart races you can do, which has the most blatant rubber banding I've ever seen in a game. Lay it down. Besides that, you can watch episodes of the actual show and look at the trailer of Black Sight Area 51. Cool, I guess. Overall, Aqua Teen is mediocrity personified. The golf is pretty blah and the combat is no Devil May Cry. Actually, it's a guarantee that Devil will cry if he were to play this. Kirby in golf? Don't worry, it's pretty good. Kirby's Dream Course is one of the funner spins on video game golf you can possibly play. And I'm not just saying that because you can make the ball spin, I'm not that creative with this script. It's a game where your objective is to slaughter every enemy in your way, but it's in mini golf form. When you take shots, you have to hit the enemies. If you don't, you lose health and eventually die. The game gives you so many tools, like adding a curve to your shots or doing these pop shots. You have to utilize these in order to traverse around these stages which have obstacles themselves. Some enemies you kill give you powers like the umbrella, the rock, and my favorite, fire. Okay, this one actually sucks. Combining all of your abilities in one single move is one of the most satisfying things you could do in any of these games. Thank you. 
Yep, getting perfect pop shots into holes. Don't clip that audio, please. Even the aesthetic and music all give off that Kirby vibe. At least I think it does, I have no idea. The only exposure I had to this little pink cotton ball with shoes is Smash Brothers and that anime that aired on like Saturday mornings. I always thought he was Jigglypuff's brother when I was younger. Anyway, the two player mode is the real highlight. You have to get stars and you get stars by killing enemies, but you could steal those stars or you can even hit a switch that swaps the amount of stars you have. You can even use your powers to attack your opponent and screw them over. That's one one of the main things with this game, you screw over the other person, which leads to a lot of broken friendships and divorces and oh man, I think you may even hate your dog if he can play this game with you. Kirby's Dream Course is a great game. The only thing that I hate is that there aren't more courses. Any game that gives you an umbrella and calls it a power has to be good, right? Okay, I'll be relatively brief with this one because King of Clubs is not really all that weird and it's not really all that good. This is just a standard mini golf game with some kind of unique courses, but it's just all very generic and uninteresting to look at. The graphics are ugly, the gameplay is boring, and the music is just, well... You also have this one thing where you can hit gophers, I guess. Eh. Even searching the game on YouTube, one of the first results is this LimeWire quality ass video where the guy recording yawns. <sighs> yeah, that about sums it up right there, I'd say. There aren't too many games that are so obscure that they are relegated to videos that have worse quality than a cartel beheading video. You might be asking why I included it in this video if it's not all that weird. Well, I thought it would be, and I didn't want the footage to go to waste, so... There you go. It makes the top nine games of the video. Unfortunately, I'm only playing nine games and the one through eight spots are already taken. Just in case you thought golf was missing more ninjas. Well, here you go. So you start ninja golf by golfing with a ninja. Once you, <laughs> once you, <laughs> Once you hit the ball, you have to run after it for your next hit. But on your way to the ball, you're interrupted by ninjas, giant frogs, and whatever the hell this is? A gopher? Looks like you can really use a golf cart. When fighting these enemies, it's more so a 2D side scroller. You exclusively kick these enemies, and that's really all there is to this game. Each part of the course is considered its own area. Meaning that if I'm on the green, that's different than being on the grass, which is different than being in the sand, which is different than being in the water where you have to karate kick sharks. There's some strategy involved here. You have a pretty good idea how each part works, so maybe you shoot around the green to be on the grass more, or vice versa. It's up to you. At the end of each hole, you fight a dragon, which you throw shuriken stars at to kill it. The game doesn't even let you putt. Real ninjas don't putt. Either way, after a couple of levels, the game just throws an absurd amount of enemies at you to up the difficulty. I can't imagine picking the hardest difficulty, which is called Kamikaze, and I ain't talking World War II. Unfortunately, there's not much else to the game, even if it is an older game. It doesn't even really have any kind of music either, so you just hear Ninja Golf Man salt shaker footsteps and exploding enemies. Ninja Golf is a weird game that purely survives off of the novelty of the title alone. Ninja Golf. It's just a great title. No matter if it's a game, movie, or it's some type of porno, you piqued my interest already. Despite these being mechs and the anime aesthetic, these robots are 100% American because they use the imperial system of measurement. Or maybe they're one of these other countries that also use it. I guess 30.48 meter robots just isn't as catchy. At the very least, 100 foot robot golf lives up to the title. 
I can't confirm if these robots are 100 feet, but they are playing golf. And just like Ninja Golf, the title does a good job of getting my interest, but the actual game itself is pretty unremarkable. The big draw to this game is that you golf and have free reign over your robot. You can stomp around, fly, hit opposing golfers, destroy buildings. But here's the thing with robot golf. Describing it and actually playing it are two different things. It sounds fun, and the picture in your head is fun, but it's just not. Hitting a golfer just stuns them for a second, and that's it. Flying is just a slow hover, and you get these special abilities, but a lot of them aren't really all that useful from what I can tell. Like some robots have this little dash, and some can shoot lasers that don't hit anything. It's just all very unsatisfying. The only thing that's kind of cool is the fact that buildings or other structures get in your way, and you can knock them down to clear a pathway. As for the actual golf, it's the the least enjoyable golf I've ever played for a video game. Outside of that hick golf or whatever I was talking about earlier. For starters, every ball hit is like in low gravity. I thought this was because I was on the moon or underwater, but even on plane levels, it's still mostly the same. It's an odd choice. Why would you make a game about golf, one of the slower sports you can possibly watch, and somehow make it even slower? The whole game just seems like it was meant to be this trolling type of game because you could just freely block player shots and mess with opposing golfers. The courses are badly designed as well. There are so many spots on these courses where the ball gets stuck and it's just irritating. Combining that with these very floaty physics leads to stuff like this. Okay, so we're just gonna hit this ball and uh, I don't know why it's going straight up in the air. Okay, it's coming right back down, right where it was, okay. Again. Oh, <laughs> it's doing it again. <laughs> okay, let's try again. That's so good. It's like uh, how was? Uh, fuck this. We have a campaign mode too, and I just. I, I honestly just don't get it. It's very poorly voice acted with these actors that sound like they're recording these lines over a Zoom call with the PS5 controller as their microphone. Ah, yes, fantastic. I'm thinking the next recruit would be your final television sparring partner. Ernie? He's never coming back to Robot Golf again. My charm and presence just couldn't be matched, and he went back to doing his, uh... Successful use vehicle business? That sounds right. What Silent, the fuck is undetect this? I guess it's supposed to be a satire of poorly dubbed English anime. I genuinely don't know. I put it this way. If it's not a parody, it's some of the worst voice acting and cutscenes you could possibly look for in gaming. If it is a parody, it's just not funny in the slightest. Playing the campaign is essentially a race to the hole as opposed to traditional golf. I'd avoid this. There's a chance that I just don't understand the game, but you shouldn't need context to enjoy a video game. The character design designs are really cool and I like the fact that each character has their own unique little mini game to swing the club. That's about it. Any game that can have five corgis pilot a mega zord and still be bad is like impossible. I have no idea how they did it. Cheap golf. Uh, it's not cheap, it's inexpensive. What we have here is a normal golf game that uses Atari graphics. Nothing strange here. Nope. Nothing at all can't think of a single thing. Okay, so this is one of those cliche games where everything is deeper than it appears to be. Ooh. Yeah, so your goal here is to get your square, which is supposed to be a ball, into a black square, which is supposed to be a hole. Supposed to be a hole? I wrote hole as in hole with a W. I swear to God, I am dumb. You have to do this with a certain par so you don't have unlimited shots. Each hole you complete gets this little text directed at you which is an AI named Susan that's slowly coming to life throughout the game. I can assure that this Susan is more human than the YouTube one. As you play more and as Susan gets more and more unhinged, the levels get crazier and crazier. Like look at this. Much like American hero Johnny Sins, this game is more than just putting things into holes. There are levels where you have to avoid these red things that kill you and there can even be levels where you have to collect keys to open teleporters that teleport you to other teleporters that teleport you to the hole. 
it's a lot. It's kind of funny because after a level like that, you can get one like this, which is almost impossible to fail. It's fascinating that every person, no matter their skill set or experience, knows how to play a golf game. You either get the pull and release style or the stop and start for accuracy and power. I don't know, that's just something that came to my mind when playing this for some reason. Susan asks you questions every once in a while because the game's deep. And funny enough, they can link you to an actual site that's in theme with the game. I'm over the whole concept of deeper meaning in any type of media, but this is a nice touch. Overall, cheap golf is a fun time. I personally could do without the AI stuff, and I'm not talking about Iverson, but I enjoyed playing it. Much like What the Golf, cheap golf works more like a puzzle game that has golf mechanics rather than just being golf. But I like this one for the most part. Well, that makes one person. Okay, here we go. The Outlaw Games. These have been on my bucket list for a while, and while I expected to make a video on them by itself, I just couldn't resist talking about the golf ones here. Outlaw Golf goes for the crude, edgy route. I mean, what other game lets you use a dominatrix chick to beat up her fat sub? Now that, my friends, was a major league ass kick. Uh, yeah, this is a golf game, right? Yep, it is. And we have a list of colorful characters here like Stripper, Redneck, and White Rapper. While cliche, the characters aren't bad, they have a certain charm to them. When getting into the game, you may recognize the commentator. Hailing from the rough and tumble, crime ridden inner city streets of Beverly Hills, wannabe rapper Ice Trey dropped out of school to pursue his dream of rapping and playing golf. A decision that was about as promising as his single digit SAT score. Caddying for Ice Trey is his one man posse, spinner, and tattoo consultant. Fresh fruit. Yep, that's Steve Carell. First Scott Van Pelt and now him. What's with these golf games and having the ability to lure in these commentators? Another thing I've noticed is that these games have similarities to some EA Sports big games. The character select screen looks exactly like the character select screen from the first SSX game. And a transition to a character cutscene really reminds me of NFL Street. Like, tell me not. Yes, indeedy Rudy, that's gonna make you feel good about your golf game. Yeah, baby, give me a taste, brother. I don't know if this is coincidence or what. Jumping into the game, you'll be disappointed or relieved to find out that this is pretty much just golf with window dressing. It's good golf, don't get me wrong. The commentary is pretty funny, but since this is a golf game, there has to be 700 jokes about holes and strokes and whatnot. Trixie's handicap is her mouth. And Steve Carell's commentary, while funny, sounds a bit too cut and paste like Smackdown Shut Your Mouth commentary or a YouTube poop from like 2008. Killer Miller has this putt to save par. The thing that gets me to constantly laugh most is, believe it or not, this one guy in the crowd laughing when you take a bad shot. <laughs> Like man, whoever did that laugh, give them a raise. But the gameplay is pretty good. You pull your club back and with the right stick, you push it forward to swing. Timing controls the power and if you push the right stick forward at an angle, you hook or push the ball. You also have the ability to curve the shot or put some spin on the ball. For putting, you have to consider the hills and the slopes and the game gives you a ghost route to help you out. You only have three uses though. Going into the weird territory, you have a composure meter that gets affected if you make good or bad shots. You can refill your composure meter by beating up your caddy. Now that beating went the distance. 
If I put balls in the sand, you get my backhand. The main mode for this game is tournament mode, where you take a golfer and go through 30 courses and unlock clubs and balls. The courses are very well designed, and I just wish there was more than a regular one, a shitty looking polluted Pittsburgh looking ass place, and Texas. Just three courses really, and really outside of playing with friends, that's really about it. On the surface, Outlaw Golf probably looks like a crazy game, but it's just a golf game with a lot of theatrics and some quirky dialogue. But wait! Yep, there's a sequel. There's actually more than a sequel, but I'm not playing these Christmas expansions. I find it kind of funny that this is one of these blockbuster exclusives. Like the equivalent would be me making a new video and posting it to like daily motion or something. If you notice the first Outlaw Golf game was rated T for teen and the second one is rated M for mature. Why? Enhance. Yes, that's right. You have some very premium content kind of clothes, if you know what I mean. You even have a cheat code to CSI enhance boobs. Doesn't work for the guys, though. Besides potentially demonetizable outfits, Outlaw Golf 2 doesn't add too much new to the game. You have the stuff from the first game, the characters, the humor, the beatings. It's taser time. Feel the burn. But some new things too. Firstly, there's licensed music in the game, which makes things a little bit more lively than the elevator music from the first game. The golf itself is mostly the same. You can now stop the meter to go over 100% and you have this ghost ball. It gives you a little preview of your lined up shot. Can only be used once per hole though. Probably the biggest new thing that's been added is the ability to drive a golf cart. You get a golf cart to do several objectives like running over people. Chase. If you do the objective, you get a special shot. Not to bring up SSX again, but going from Outlaw Golf 1 to Outlaw Golf 2 is like going from SSX to SSX Tricky. Both sequels are improvements of the first game, so much that they make the first game obsolete by result. But having said that, there's nothing really new in the game. It's just the same game, but better. And that's it for now. Anyway, I don't know. It's up to you as there's more games I can definitely play. But I'll stop at nine because that's an odd number. And I know that there's going to be someone out there that's unreasonably upset that I stopped at an odd number. To rank all of these games real quick, I'll have to say the worst one is uh, Whatever the name of that one game is, hopefully I have the cover on the screen or some gameplay, whatever. Eighth would be the 100 foot robot golf game. Seventh would be Aqua Teen. Sixth is Ninja Golf, love the name. Fifth is Outlaw Golf 1. Fourth is Cheap Golf. Third is Outlaw Golf 2. Second is What the Golf. And the first is Kirby. We golfed with AI, fast food, Kirby, and whatever else you can think of. What did we learn? We need more ninjas in sports video games.